Welcome back to Beyond the Uniform. I am Justin Asiri, and my goal is to help members of the military community thrive in their post-service career and life. Today is episode number 438, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. Well, if you're new to Beyond the Uniform, welcome. We have over 437 other episodes. Usually the format I follow is every Monday, I meet with a military veteran about their civilian career, who they are, what they do, how they got there, and advice for any other veteran seeking to do the same. You're reaching us today on a Thursday episode where we mix up that format. And today, I wanted to just do a quick Reading Rainbow style book review on a book that's helped me in my career recently, wanted to share with you as well. So the book is called The Five Dysfunctions of a Team, A Leadership Fable, and it's by an author named Patrick Lencioni, and uh, it's a New York Times bestseller. So I work with an executive coach every week, uh, just kind of someone helped me up my game in my business, and he recommended this based on the uh, hiring goals that I have for my company, Executive Presence, right now. And it's a very quick read. So the way that I would describe the book is, you know, a leadership fable is a good description. It is a fictitious account of a woman brought on to um, oversee a, you know, enormous tech company that is failing. And it's about her meetings with her le- leadership team and how she turns around this company. Um, normally, you know, in business school, when I would have read a book like this, I would have dismissed it because I kind of hate the cheesiness of these artificial situations. However, I actually really enjoyed this book because um, I feel like, as I think more and more about how to effectively run a company and create a culture, it's helpful to get that fictitious view into what someone is thinking in a meeting, how they uh, maybe judge the actions of other people of their team and whether or not to engage when they're acting out or how to try to turn around someone's attitude or performance or how to even have difficult conversations with people who are not meant to be part of that team going forward. Uh, the book gets its title from the framework that this um, that the the fictitious CEO of the uh, company comes up with to turn around this company. And um, it's essentially, you know, she draws this as a pyramid, if you can picture that. And at the bottom of the pyramid, she, she has a uh, dysfunction and what that causes. So the first dysfunction is an absence of trust on a team, which leads to people acting with, in, uh, with leads to invulnerability. Uh, there is fear of conflict next, which is leads to artificial harmony. Third on the list is lack of commitment, which leads to a sense of ambiguity. Fourth is an avoidance of accountability, which leads to low standards. And then there's an inattention to results, which leads to status in ego. Uh, I will revisit this as my team expands. I think that there's a really good framework there for what makes for an, uh, a healthy team and specifically an executive team. But what I mostly appreciated about the book was the sense that, uh, you know, this, this fictitious CEO tells her team that most people would rather go to a movie than go to a two hour staff meeting. And, and the reason she posits for that is that movies have a lot of conflict and growth and most meetings don't. And then she guides her team through the thought that, like, you know, a good meeting should have a lot of conflict. If people are approaching it with trust and respect for each other, there should be a lot of disagreement and there should be a lot of um, healthy discussion where there are contrary views. And then the CEO's job is not to pulse their team for consensus. Their job is to hear out the arguments and then make a decision. And then it's the executive team, whether or not they agree with that decision, to get on board and propagate that throughout the organization. And that last piece is something that um, you know I experienced in the military and I still believe in, which is you know, whether or not you agree with the policy, if you're part of the organization's leadership, you need to find a way to make that happen. Um, but what I haven't experienced a lot of in my career post-military or during the military was that sense of healthy conflict 
And I, you know, I would obviously extend that even to personal relationships. And um, as someone who's pretty conflict avoidant, not having that sense of really the value of conflict and how it can lead to sharpening and how it can lead to people in a group not jockeying for power, not jockeying for their idea to win, but really sharply and succinctly explaining your viewpoint and why it's important for the organization, having that back and forth of, of, of contention that can lead to the better outcome. So I liked that in particular. Um, I think it's just a good read in general to get a sense of how a team might operate and what it might look like to enter into a very large organization and affect change specifically through leadership. And, um, you know, I think that, that turnaround work in general in the corporate world is very interesting. The thought of, you know, these executives will parachute in and, and their goal is to identify the dysfunction of an organization and turn it around. And I can imagine how usually that starts with mindset and leadership. So for those of you looking for an atypical business book, much less of a uh, instructional manual and much more kind of showing by telling a story, and you could probably finish this easily, you know, in two or three hours. So uh, let me know your thoughts on this sort of episode. You know, I think that the overarching theme that I'm, I'm hoping to convey here is that the guests that I've had on the show that I most admire are constantly learning and growing. It never stops for them. And that's something through this, um, through Beyond the Uniform that I'm, I'm trying to embody is really, you know, reading <laughs> every single day. You know, that's one of my goals is every day to read something that's professional in nature, uh, you know, a business book. So just started the other one today. I'll be reading that uh, hopefully in the next two weeks for you on the uh, Thursday episodes. But we'll be back on Monday with our traditional format of a interview with a military veteran about their civilian career. Take care.